years ago, I took an unconventional path for myself and I became a mental health entrepreneur. Neither was I a mental health practitioner, nor was the market for mental health services really booming in India. To put things in perspective, in our country of 1.3 billion people, where about 20% of us suffer from some form of emotional or mental health issues, less than 1% was seeking help. So how did I take this unconventional path for myself? And how did I make an impact on this journey? The answer to this lies in pain and struggle. The path to success, my friends, is never a red carpet. I learned it on the go through my own experience with struggles and failures. And that is why I find it imperative to share that idea so that anyone who's going through a tough time does not get bogged down with it. Because the failure that I most hated helped me find my path. And not only that, helped me excel in it. My own journey, I can summarize that in three key dots, three points that helped me and help anyone create that impact. The first dot, the first dot was of pain. I was always scared of failing, and who isn't? And I was scared of pain. I had an easy life by all measures where everything about me was managed for by my parents, including an opportunity to study business in Australia. But it was in Australia as a young girl when I was all alone for the very first time. It was in Australia when I had to manage my own affairs. And it was then when a fear cropped up that I would mess up big time. The fear, of course, was unfounded, but it was too big for me to overcome. Certain things happened one after the other that pushed me to what I now know was depression. I was lost, I was homesick, I was clueless. I would type out my assignments but would never submit them, thinking that they were absolute trash. I would go to the university, come back and just sleep. I did not even feel like going to the grocery store. So when the food supplies that I had finished, I went without food for two days, even though I was really hungry. I wanted to ask someone, anyone, why me? And at other times, I felt like I should give all of, all of this up and go back to India and say, sorry, mom and dad, your daughter is one of the biggest failures. Seeing how I had isolated myself, luckily one of my professors at the campus called me and he asked me to go and see a counselor on campus, even though I was barely managing myself in a healthy way. I still felt ashamed. And I said, I am saying I don't need a counselor. To this, he said, Shipra, only sane people recognize that there is an issue and fix it. Don't break yourself. His words stayed with me. And I decided to dust that stigma because depression was already drowning me. And through that process of therapy, I could revive myself from the state of nothingness, from an isolated, quiet, shy person in the classroom who was begging for extensions after extensions. I became happy again, smiling again, confident again, and this time a girl who scored high distinctions after high distinctions. So the therapy really helped me. I completed my studies and came back to India, this time with a great job in my kitty and as an improved version of myself. But it was like the same pain that I had felt and dealt with in Australia. I had to see more of it happening around me here. One of my close friends who was going through that same personal emotional crisis was labeled as weak, as freak, and even insane. By who? Our own common friends. And everyone's suggestion to him was man up, dude. If I did not have my own tryst with depression, I may have never realized that nobody chooses to be mentally or emotionally ill. They're just like physical illnesses. Mental illness knock you out of the blue. 
And rather than judgment, please give that person your love, your care, and support. That was the moment of truth for me. I wanted to change the scenario. I wanted to do something about it. And so my worst pain of depression helped me find my path. And I conceptualized the idea of eSci Clinic, an online and social mental health platform. And once I had the idea, I was very happy. I wanted to go and talk to my family about it, which is, by the way, a typical Punjabi household. So I remember one of my relatives remarked, Translating this, that now leaving aside such a great job, what's left with you and you in your life is that you want to open this online mental hospital. My friends, it had the same lack of awareness, that same caricature of a person suffering from mental illness that I wanted to change. And that was the day when I decided I would be speaking up about my own mental illness, not just at one platform, but at every platform. Because I am one of those mentals that my aunt had just casually made a reference to. I wanted to destroy this idea of being an anonymous, invisible mental health sufferer. Because how do you recognize mental health issues as normal if you are going to de-recognize the person behind that illness? So from my worst pain, I found my path. So to anyone who is going through a tough phase in life and their worst low, please don't be bogged down by that pain. That pain is there for a reason. You need to go through it, finding a path for yourself and for many others. So I thought my job starting something is really done and now I will have the red carpet walk soon waiting for me that I will be very successful. But in reality, starting something really means nothing. As our services launched online, I could see that they don't yet make an impact. They do not help a person suffering from mental health issues speak up openly, feel respected, feel valued. There was something missing. And that's where I met my second challenge, the challenge of change. And once I knew about it, I was ready with it. So I had put down all the points that I thought a user for mental health service would need because, hey, I had been suffering from an illness. I knew best, and that was my mindset. So I went to my team, which was largely of mental health experts. And as they listened to my ideas, they did not like them at all. I remember early on in a brainstorming session, somebody remarked, but you are not even a therapist. You are not a psychologist. How do you know about it? At that point in time, I felt maybe they are right. It was very strange, but I felt like an outsider in my own company. Even though I was a leader, ironically, I felt I had the weakest position on the table. So I had to take several steps back to understand what was going on. And as I saw this with an open mind, it became clear that the expert viewpoints were very valid at a lot of places that did not need any change. But with that, I also realized that my perspective, the perspective of a user, is very relevant at several other places that are calling for desperate change. So post many meetings and finally with this insight, I spoke again and I asserted myself. I said, I agree I may not be an expert, but I am an intelligent user on this table. And I definitely know what, me, what more needs to be done because what we have is clearly not enough. And that moment, change happened. Collaboration happened when the knowledge of the expert finally met with the insights of a user we could evolve eSci Clinic into a beautiful patient-centric platform that we called I Will. I Will because it had the voice of the depressed, the voice of the anxious, the voice of the sufferer at its center. So for anyone who wants to make change, do not ever be afraid of speaking up as an outsider because to shake things up, your fresh perspective is so needed. But with that, also be mindful that the resistance is not just from others, but it is from you too. 
your experience that is valid and needs a place on the table need not and should not replace every other experience that is already valid and present. Because no one person can move a mountain. It takes a village. And your job as a change maker is then to put that village together to enable change. So well, now we had a beautiful product that actually worked for the users. It actually made them felt respected. So now I was sure. This is my time. This is my moment. This is my glory. And I will soon have this red carpet laid right in front of me and everybody would be knowing my name at least in India. But that is where, when I met my worst and my most difficult challenge yet. The challenge to keep myself going on that path that I had created. The challenge to keep my own motivation on. This platform was really growing at a fast pace but it still was an infant that needed more from me than it could give me. And that is where I had miscalculated it all. I did not manage my personal finances so well, understanding this. So I remember eight months ago, it was my dad's birthday, and I wanted to buy him a gift. But when I looked at and my account, post managing all the expenses of the business, I was not left with any money to be able to do that. In that moment, I once again felt like a big, big failure. My Punjabi aunt was speaking in my head, Dekh liya tune ki kitta? And I was feeling hopeless and I was feeling redundant. I was feeling, what have I done? I was never even this broke, not even in my school days. Because the measure of success in our world of business is by the number of bank accounts you hold multiplied by the currencies they have and I really hadn't reached anywhere. I had rather slipped many levels. How was that success? So in that day, grappling with this painful thought, I thought I must give up. I have done enough to raise awareness to a great cause, and my job is done. I cannot take this anymore. So I called up two of my very key team members, and I said, my walk was only up until this point. I want to give up. I'm done with it. My team member replied, Shipra, delay your judgment. Hold your thought. I have to share a customer story with you. And it got me excited. So she told me about a customer who had written to her today. This woman was a domestic abuse survivor of seven years. The one man who loved her the most, according to her, was the reason she had not even one part of her body spared. And she had thanked I will because it was for our support that finally after these seven long years of abuse, she could hold that man's hand and say not anymore. It was because of, because of us that she got the courage to escape that abuse and leave that man's hand once and for all. Tears trickled down my eyes. Wasn't this also a gift for my father and this team who I created wants me to walk with them. They are motivating me. How good these people are, how lucky I am. And the impact that I wanted my platform to create, it is creating it. How can I leave all of it in the middle? Wouldn't that be very selfish? And in that moment, ladies and gentlemen, I decided to not give up, but give in more of myself. I remember to myself the words of famous leader Jack Ma, founder of Alibaba, who once said that in the early three years of his business, what kept him going was the customer feedback, because money was non-existent. How was I different? And in that moment, I stayed the course and I persevered. Big changes, they don't happen on a day. They don't happen in a week. They don't happen in a fortnight. It takes years for big changes to happen, and your perseverance will be tested at every moment. What starts with a lot of passion slowly through the process of this endless wait starts making you feel hopeless. You feel tired because your hard work is not matched with the rewards that were expected. But stay on, stay the course, because change will happen. As I speak here today, I will is a stronger community. It's growing 
every moment. It's a community that is stigma free. It's a community that has been a model for making mental health care change pan India. It's a community that believes finally that mental illnesses are no different than physical illnesses. It's a community that has changed the narrative for mental health from denial to acceptance, from silence to say, from humiliation to dignity, from anonymity to identity. And to anyone who is suffering from depression or anxiety or any other mental illness, please don't write yourself off. You are the business leader. You are a star, a celebrity of tomorrow. You just need to keep believing in yourself. You need to speak up, seek help but not give up. And as for these life's beautiful challenges, we all have them. If you have too many life's challenges, consider yourself lucky, because life rarely gives a comfort zone to one of its winners. That's the idea that is definitely worth sharing. Thank you.